check us out on YouTube. It's popping, baby. Every episode's going up on our YouTube page and also clips of highlights from each episode. So like all our favorite parts of each episode will be isolated and put on YouTube for your enjoyment. Go to youtube.com slash I'm sorry, dad, and subscribe, baby. You can, of course, donate to our Patreon. Uh, $5 a month will get you uh, just knowing that you're helping us out. We haven't been that active on Patreon, got to admit. But if you are looking for a way to help us out, patreon.com slash I'm sorry, dad. That'll do. Come see me live with Christina P. from your mom's house podcast in Burbank, California, on May 31st and June 1st, Christina P. is headlining, and I'm, I've just been booked to do some uh, quick spots before her. Uh, it'll be fun. I just got passed at Flappers Comedy Club, so shout out to Flappers. Thanks for uh, noticing that I'm funny, and I'm looking forward to whatever stage time you can give me. So check out Flappers May 31st and June 1st. I'll be there with Christina P. Let's get right into this episode with returning guest, Jamie Kilstein. He's a comedian and podcaster. Check out his podcast, uh, the Jamie Kilstein Podcast. He's about to move to the middle of the desert to uh, reconnect with himself and focus on podcasting. So enjoy this episode with comedian and podcaster, Jamie Kilstein. Brandon's great. Welcome back to the pod, Jamie Kilstein. Hi, guys. Uh, a fan favorite. They were so nice. I Your people say, are so nice. They are. I mean, I also gave like a really sad suicide speech. So <laughs> if they were just like, fuck you, kill yourself, <laughs> like that would have been a bummer. Yeah. Um, so maybe they were just nice because they were like, yo, if I don't send him compliments, he's going to fucking die. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they were amazing. I really like loved them. Well, that's good. Thanks for uh, sending Jamie messages, guys. Yeah. And uh, very sad and vulnerable. Yes. Uh, and I know you just did that as clickbait. Yeah. Uh, it's all fake. Is it? None of it was real. We no, know. Don't no, I'm living in my palace, like rolling around yeah. gold coins, <laughs> just yelling at servants. Yeah, exactly. I'm so sad, you guys. Guys, I got to bring up the elephant in the room. Yeah. New podcast table. Podcast. Oh, this is the first day? <laughs> yeah. That's why you had me on. Good. As like the, just to like be like, Jamie will just be happy to be here. Yeah. We'll try him on the weird table first. And I got to say, for the people listening right now, having some audio issues, gonna check the audio real quick. <laughs> <laughs> just give me a check, little check. Check. Hey, hey, one, two, check, one, two. Now say something sexy. Uh, check, one, two. Ooh, <laughs> fuck. fuck. Yeah, that, I'm not gonna be able to get an erection after <laughs> saying that. We're back, baby. Mm. All right, well, what were we talking about? This amazing podcast table. Dude, we were talking about uh, suicide. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think. Well, wait, let's get over this table, guys. What do you think? Oh, oh no, it makes me want to kill myself. That's yeah, what he, that's that's what what he was, was talking that about. Was, that's, that's what it was. That was the suicide tie-in. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. shit. I mean, wow. it's not, it's not, it, it, you know, it looks, uh, I feel like we should have like hot beverages. Yeah. <laughs> it feels very adult. Whereas like, I feel like when we were on the couch, it was like, hey, we're like the cool fucking stoners. Now it's like, we yeah. fucking grown up. You're like the child actor who's now doing indie films. Thank you, yeah. man. That's where we're at. Doing indie th- films by choice. By yeah, choice. Yeah. By choice. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Haley Joel Osment in that new uh, Ted Bundy movie. So good. Oh, yep. yeah. yeah. I saw that. I liked it. Did you? You didn't like it, huh? It was okay. It just Gee. felt like it was confu- It was just confusing as fuck, yeah. like but, the way uh, it's stitched together. Well, I saw John Wick three times, so I was not seeing indie movies this week. <laughs> not, I haven't seen John Wick 3. Is it good? It's so good. It's good. I like the John Wick. It's so yeah. violent. It's yeah, just, nice. Just fun, cartoony like Looney Tunes yeah. movies, basically. Yeah, yeah, they're horribly violent, but they're just so like. But also, not, like so that's what was great about action movies. I feel like for a while, they tried to like take themselves seriously and like write weird plot twists yeah. and like take away the fights. Whereas yeah. like the '90s, 2000s martial arts movies, I grew up, it was just violence. Yeah, it was just people kicking ass and not trying to be something that's not. And I feel like John Wick and like The Raid. Have you seen The Raid? I haven't seen no. The Raid. Oh, same deal. Not even in English because there's like no dialogue. It's just <laughs> like. Brutal storytelling through like head kicks and yeah. like stabbings. I like that. Mm. That's what I like about John Wick. Yeah. It's just like in the first movie, they kill his dog. Yeah. That's right? all you need. That's all you <laughs> need. All you You're need. just like, I want to, I heard, if, if one of you guys said someone killed my dog, I'd be like, I guess we're a murder posse now. <laughs> yeah. Like that would just be like the rest of my life is yeah. finding who killed that dog and murdering them. What's uh, John Wick's motivation in this one just to continue? Well, he still has ass. a dog. He still has, well, he has a new dog. Yeah. Wait, isn't the second one, didn't he like, uh, 
Why did we? Yeah, why does he keep killing? They people? always kind of have to keep like <laughs> bringing back a dog into it. So he's still doing it. The, the actual line in this, it's really beautiful. Is he's essentially doing it to stay alive and keep the memory of his wife alive. So yeah. it's still, which also was like he got the dog from his wife after she okay. died to like. So he's, I mean, this guy's such a fucking badass. Where like he's not just a, he is staying alive and risking his life just so he can have the memory of his dead wife. <laughs> And it's just like, I almost didn't come here today because I was sad. And yeah. I think about me versus John Wick, and I'm like, I'm He's a piece of shit. Mass slaughtering people for love. For love. For That's the memory of For the love. memory of love. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's great. <laughs> to it's honor great. his wife's life, he's yeah. killing a shitload of dudes. Everybody. It's who a great have... first date movie, John Wick 3. Yeah? Yeah. Teaches a valuable lesson about yeah. love. And then you shoot your date afterwards. That's the lesson. Yeah. Don't That's... fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. Go see John Wick 3. John Wick 3. On your day. <laughs> so, uh, Jamie, what's new with you? You're moving. I'm leaving LA. I'm, <sighs> but that's, I, I texted like you guys and like Rogan. Like, I, I feel like I've. I did all the things in LA that I made fun of people for doing, where I was like, I'm going to come here and make stuff. Yeah. And then I was just taking like weird meetings and like. You're supposed to hang out at the clubs. And like, oh, I yeah. wasn't making shit. And so, and I, I was just really depressed. And uh, I met a girl and she's great. And I kind of want to have a family. And I've met, I've met celebrity kids. They're not the best. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I don't know if I want to raise kids here. And mm -hmm. I, we just found, like, we're going to move out to the desert, which sounds like creatively, it sounds like a bad idea. But I heard uh, Mark Duplass was on. Uh, Dax Shepard's podcast. Don't listen to it. Listen to this podcast and mine. Right. <laughs> Fuck you, Dax. What's listen your podcast to? called? The Jamie Kilstein Podcast. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. Um, and uh, they had such a good line where I think it was Duplass who said, uh, uh, creativity comes from constraint. Mm. And I really like that because there's part of me that I'm like, is it stupid that I'm still in entertainment and I'm leaving Los Angeles to go to the desert? It's right. like, kind of. But at the same time, <laughs> I think that I was just going and getting drunk with comics and hanging out for like four hours at shows. And then I was too tired to write or make yeah. shit or work on a podcast. Like I stopped drinking and my podcast is like daily all of a sudden instead Sweet. of like the laborious like once a week I had to do. And uh, I think there's going to be something about just being in the desert, being in nature, being in like a much nicer apartment for cheaper yeah. where I'm just going to be like, okay, now I can just make shit all day. I don't have to worry about calling my agent. I don't have to worry about uh, going to hang out with like FaceTime at these clubs. I'm like, yeah. I'm just going to write the shit I want to write and I'll put it out there and the people who are going to like it are going to find it and like, I like all it. done. Sweet. Mm -hmm. What what part of uh, the desert? Uh, Arizona. Just somewhere? So, yes, yeah, somewhere. <laughs> we're going <gonna leave, laughs> <we're, we're> <laughs> to leave it mysterious. Although it is perfect timing because I've been very anti-gun my whole uh, career. And after yeah. seeing John Wick, I'm like, oh, I'm going to buy every gun yeah. known to man. <laughs> I'm going to buy all the guns. And Arizona, I believe, is open carry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to be walking around doing my <laughs> podcast just fucking armed to the teeth uh, okay. in Arizona. So I'm very excited. Uh, it should be, be part of your podcast. Everybody on the podcast has to hold a gun. Oh, it'll be talk. so good. Like yeah. a mix of like Russian roulette yeah. and like, yeah, just like casually <laughs> flipping the podcast yeah. or, or the guns around. Yeah, Russian roulette is a segment on every episode. Oh, that's so like every third episode, somebody dies. This is a fucking Russian roulette table, too. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. You're maturing. This yeah. table <laughs> is a total Russian roulette table. It's just yeah. missing like smoke and like a dark room. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can make that happen. Do it. Deer you Hunter. Do it. Deer, yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's cool. Yeah. So uh, and I, I agree with uh, Duplass's comments about uh, constraint. It's cool, creativity, right? Cre creativity. Boredom creates mm. creativity. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That sounded redundant. No, but mm. even like constraint with like deadlines. Like the times you're like, I'm never going to get this done. And then someone's like, you need it done tomorrow. And suddenly you just like write something great. And you're like, oh, I'm a, just an asshole. I was just stalling. You oh, know, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. just need something. And so, but LA really is. I mean, you guys have seemed to avoid that, but it's like, it's filled with distractions um, mm -hmm. that make not just distractions like it's filled with distractions that make you feel like you're accomplishing something. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, like oh, what? I hung out at the fucking comedy store and like yeah, I yeah. talked to this guy and this guy and this guy. And it's like, cool. But like, what did you do? Yeah, I know. It's like I it just pay too much for drinks. Right. I feel like ugh, I mean, stand up just takes so fucking long. I'm six years in. Yeah. And I'm thinking about going to grad school. But I know that's talking about that a little too much, but that's right that's around. By the way, it, it, if you can make it two more years, 
eight is sort of the magic number where people start like zoop. Really, it's so bizarre. Eight yeah. was when I <laughs> what I heard from all like I've f- heard ten. Okay, eight. Yeah, yeah, eight, but even ten. Eight specifically. Uh, was a number that I feel like Attell and like maybe even Patrice, like just all those old New York guys that like were like yeah. a couple grades above me. That's what they always they're like eight years to find your voice or whatever, I see. and like you'll get your first. Like I didn't get my first TV thing till like probably eight years in. Okay, and then I got it, and then I think the ten year thing comes in where I I got it, and then I immediately got super depressed for the first time. And I didn't know why because I was like, "This is a- after I did it." And it after, went. What did you do? Uh, it was called. The, it wasn't even a big show. It was called "The World Stands Up," and it was me and Bo Burnham's TV debut. And he was still super young and not tall, and his dad <laughs> had to bring him. Um, so like <laughs> nice. his dad was just sitting there. <laughs> And then, oh my god! And then, uh, the guy who played Biff on Back to the Future, yeah, nice, uh, was there. He, like, I got one for your young audience, the hip Bo Burnham <laughs> yeah, reference, yeah. and then a Biff <laughs> reference for any like of their <laughs> parents who were watching. And he didn't do well um, because it was so people loved him when he came out on stage. Lo- like the place, mm-hmm. it was a theater, and they went fucking yeah. nuts. And then he did, and they went nuts because of Back to the Future. But then his bit, he was like a guitar he, act. Oh, he was performing. He was performing. He was doing mm. stand up, and oh, he, shit. he had songs. I was f- picturing him hosting for no, some no, 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 no. Uh, he had no. You weren't picturing him with a guitar. Weird. <laughs> um, and he did a whole song, essentially berating them for like loving him and like making fun of nerds. Like, okay. hey, you like Back to the Future? Kind of doing like the Biff character. Okay. And uh, I'm like, I don't know what agent told him to do that because uh, he was like a really funny, sweet guy. And then the audience immediately turned. But anyway, so. Yeah. It was the first time I got flown overseas, and they put us up in like this like gorgeous hotel where like I think the bad guy from Lost lived in, like Charles Widmore's like hotel. And then, uh, and it was awesome, and the set was good. And then there was just this waiting, you know, like this kind of after you send a tweet, and you're like, "Is this gonna hit?" And you're like, um, refreshing. It was like that in like real life where you're just like, uh, well now the king of comedy calls me and like anoints <laughs> me and I'm making a living doing <laughs> yeah, comedy yeah. and just no one, especially it was like a fucking obscure show. Yeah. Um, but like you get this adrenaline high and then there's this crash and like, that's going to happen forever. You yeah. know, like when I used to open for Mark Marin, it was before WTF. Don't nice. listen to that podcast. <laughs> listen to uh, this. No, listen to this. <laughs> Jamie Kilstein podcast. Referencing podcasts that we didn't berate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 fuck no, that guy. No. And, uh, and you know, he wasn't happy. He's talked about that a lot. Sure. Um, but at the time, especially as like a feature act and like all of us, like he had every, he was my hero. Right. And like, I didn't know he was like not happy with that because he'd done Conan however many times and Letterman yeah. however many times and he had his Comedy Central Presents and right. like, you know, so to me, it's like, that's as far as you can get. But there really is something you know, and all the fucking self-help gurus say it, but like about like, you need to be happy in here and none of that exterior shit fixes it. And you know, that happened to me for a while. Cause I was like, well then Conan will be different than the world stands up because that's like a big show. And like, yeah, the high was bigger. Yeah. But then it's like, what happens now? You know? (laughs) And it's that constant like searching and trying to, when it's like, Oh, and then you realize you're like, Oh, I just hate myself. It has nothing to do with comedy or audiences clapping. (laughs) I'm going to go move to the desert. (laughs) (laughs) Buy a gun. (laughs) Yeah. Buy a fucking gun. Now, are you going to do a bunch of meth too? I think Uh, you should. I was, you think I should? Yeah. Mm. Your thoughts? Absolutely. Oh, so you have two yeses. Yeah, yeah. two yeses. I, I didn't know if there was even going to be a debate. Well, <laughs> fucking yes. I guess I'm doing that. I mean, how else are you going to have a podcast roulette showdown if you're not all high on meth? Yeah. yeah. Said in the Bible, I believe. And, um, and you're, doing the, it's, you're doing the podcast every day now. That's a lot of work. Got to stay up. But it's yeah. short. I I think I cracked... Like, I need to ask you guys for, like, your YouTube and Instagram advice, but I think I did something very smart for Instagram... Or for the podcast, which is... The podcast is daily... But because it's like the Patreon podcast on Friday is like the longer one where like we talk like this and about like mental health and shit like that. Mm -hmm. But it's a political Mm -hmm. podcast, but it's 20 minutes a day. So it's Mm -hmm. like, here's some bullshit that someone on the left or someone on the right did. 20 minutes, dick around, make fun of assholes, and then we're done. Literal, like people's assholes. assholes, Literally make fun of these. We get high on meth, and then we just look at assholes. Yeah, yeah. Um, But (laughs) so so it's 20 minutes, so I get to say daily. So it's 20 minutes, so it's actually not a lot of work. Far far easier, but it's also fucking marketable because everyone has like... 
You're like, I have a podcast. And they're like, cool. I have 64-hour Joe Rogan podcast to get to, <laughs> and then I right. can listen to yours. Don't listen to Joe Rogan. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, and so, yeah, it's short, which is great. I actually, I'm having an easier time doing four to five 20-minute episodes a week than I was one hour gotcha. episode a week. So I, I was like putting pressure on myself, and 20 minutes is like fucking fun. Again, constraint, right? Mm-hmm. Even with time. Right, like I have right, 20 right. minutes, so it's like, be funny, no pressure. You don't have to like meander on because you don't know if you're going to be able to fill it. Uh, yeah. And then you just go and then you're like, you're done while you're still having fun. So you want to do it the next day as opposed to whatever. Do you record back to back in one day? Or no, recording? I just do an episode. Just because it's political, I just right. do an okay. episode a day. And then I'll I just see. release it that day. Is it just you? It's just me. Uh, and then Thursdays we've been having guests. Um, so like Ethan Supley from Boy Meets World. That's not his mm. biggest credit. He has like a million followers on Twitter. And I'm like, you may remember him from Boy Meets World. Which, you don't. Which, <laughs> what was he in Boy Meets World? He was the big bully. And he was in like American History X and My Name is Earl. Oh. And like now he's lost a lot oh, of yeah, weight. Yeah. And he's the, but he's brilliant like politically. And I just had a uh, Liz Hanna who wrote uh, Long Shot, the new Seth Rogen and Charlize Theron okay. movie. I saw that. Yeah. It's great, right? Yeah, yeah I liked it a lot. The posters make it look like it's like, I'm a fat guy, she's a hot chick, I'm gonna fuck her. And it just looks like this cliche, dumb rom com. And yeah. it's like a really fucking smart funny movie and yeah. it's like political mm-hmm. and yeah so she did it <laughs> and she was brilliant and then uh yeah just having like controversial political figures from like the right and left on and it's essentially like we have like 16 year old gay punk kids who listen to the show and then like conservative 50 year olds in the church mm-hmm. and i'm just as filthy as this i think it's just people who are tired of just watching their friends yell and call everyone a nazi on facebook and it's yeah. kind of like the point of the show is, like, I'm still very liberal, but it's it's pretty much, hey, we all disagree. We're screaming at each other. Let's just, like, all dick around and make fun of assholes, again, everywhere. And snort math. And snort math. And then just, like, fucking roll the dice and spin a gun, man. <laughs> uh, and, and just fucking, like, try to find some gray area. Try to find places cool. we can agree. And I'm not, like, turning Republicans into liberals, but it's fucking cool to see when Republicans aren't always just being called Nazis, then instead of them being defensive, they'll write into the show and be like, hey, I disagree with you on that. Mm. But just so you know, like, I'm cool with gay people. And and, and they mm. start to, like, kind of open up about their liberal views. Mm-hmm. And then liberals will do the same thing. They'll write in. They're like, I'm crazy liberal, but, like, the left's being crazy that, yeah. like, they're spending all their time going after, like, a 10-year-old Kevin Hart tweet. And I think, it, the, I think the show's become really cathartic for people, especially with social media, the way that we're all just yelling at each other. It's just like a fucking break where if someone disagrees with me, they can write in and I'm not going to, like, attack them. Like, we'll just right. talk about it. Mm. Um, yeah, well, that's good. Minutes. So it's been fucking great. Well, uh, yeah. Well, we're almost on 20 minutes now. So thanks for tuning in, guys. See you Thank later. You guys. Thanks Bye. for the new structure. Bye. Don't listen to any podcasts. Fuck. I'm just going to pull up the top 20 podcasts on iTunes and we'll just shit all over them <laughs> individually. <laughs> That'll expose them. Oh, Give them fuck. exposure. Expo- oh, expose oh, oh, right. Them. I thought you meant expose, like, expose, like, the deep, dark secrets. Right. Like, yeah. That'll <laughs> expose them. <laughs> I heard. That. Dak Shepard, not actually married to Kristen Bell. Yep. And Wait, uh, what? Mark, I know that would break my heart. Mark Marin yeah. actually has always been happy. No, that would be the biggest. And everyone loves him. <laughs> <laughs> he has zero feuds with anybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do miss those old, older episodes of the Marin show. Oh, they all open with an apology? Yeah. He's like, hey, man. <laughs> Are we good? <laughs> so good. And then he, Gallagher just walk, walks off. Oh, yeah. Those I forgot podcasts. about that. I listened to yeah. Marin's, he had his like thousands episode where they kind of just went through the trajectory of the podcast. Yeah. And yeah, I totally forgot. Gall- Gallagher so, yeah. angrily so walked. That's so good. But don't listen to that. Yeah, don't, don't listen to Don't it. go no. listen to that. We'll have Gallagher on and he won't leave. So <laughs> I've joined your podcast, by the way. I'm speaking in the we. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Um, so Desert Life. <laughs> what are you uh, expecting? Do you have neighbors? Do you have a house yet? So, house, Jesus. Uh, n- apartment. I do have an apartment. Uh, God, when you, I don't know if you guys, because I lived in New York before this. I When I lived in New York, uh, back when I had uh, lots of money, I would, and like the divorce was happening, I would like, late at night in the dark, instead of looking at porn like normal guys, I would like look at real estate in like Iowa. You know, yeah. like for an apartment in LA or New York, you could have like, the governor's mansion yeah, no. in like Des Moines or whatever. <laughs> and uh, it's fucking crazy where, yeah, these like 
gorgeous luxury apartments are like 900 bucks a month. Oh, and like awesome. there's just like mountain views and there's right. like sparkling pools and like it, it's uh it's fucking incredible. I need it for my mental health, man. LA is definitely starting to I was so miserable in New York that my first 3 years in LA, I kind of like survived it. And mm-hmm. now how long have you have you guys been here for a while? Five years. Okay. Five years. Have as well. you guys hit the point of exhaustion with it, or are you just successful and happy and it's fine? I haven't gotten like fuck LA, but I've yeah. I've reached like burnout. It's like burnout. Getting burnt out with work and yeah, trying to make it. Yeah. And the, and the whole like getting disappointed that stuff. I mean, right. It's not enjoyable being disappointed. Yeah. But I mean, what, what about do you, you, Brandon? You seem to be fucking miserable. Dude. No, I I'm, You just fail no, and I'm, fail and fail. No, I'm very happy with <laughs> where I live. I don't know where all this is coming from. All no, this I, hostility. No, I do, but I actually I endlessly fascinating. I love this place. Really? Yeah, I like yeah. it a lot. I, in terms of the the way it looks and just like the layout and like you it drive is? on the 101 and you're literally yeah. driving through a mountain that has houses in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's just it's yeah. in, it's always it's interesting cool. to me. It's a cool city. Yeah. I think just like for me, I just need I like I've never been in quiet. I've always just my life has just always been in fucking I hear you, chaos. Dude. Now, there is a great chance mm. I will move to the desert. I will find quiet. And I will realize that the problems are all up here. <laughs> uh, and now I'm stuck. And now I'm in the desert because, I mean, this really is. You know, on every other podcast, I've been like, I have found the woman I'm gonna marry. I wanna have a family for the first time. And this is all very true. But there's like, of course, like a little voice that's also like, are you gonna fuck up? Like, you finally have a chance of a normal thing. Like, I never thought I'd have kids. I never thought I would like have a house or like mm-hmm. live in like the suburbs. And like, is there a part of me? Like, I've been really depressed the last like week or two for the first time in a long time. And it's like, is there part of my brain that's gonna rebel against like happiness? Mm. And then there's that part of like all of us are in comedy and the way we talk about podcasts. When are some of our like funniest shows or like? the shows that speak to people a lot of times are when like we're fucking like delirious. Right. Yeah. And so there always is that part, you know, co- comedians say it all the time. They're like, well, if I quit drinking, am I still going to be funny? Like, am I, if I'm healthy, if I'm in a right, good relationship, right. mm-hmm. like how am I going to talk about all the like negative, horrible shit? And that's like such a dangerous, terrible way to fucking think. Right. You know? I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Like, I don't think so. I'm way more creative when I'm happy. When you're happy, healthy, Granted, yeah. when you when you are depressed, you're able to see that perspective. Sure. But like when I'm depressed, I can't write for shit. That's mm. a good point. Yeah. How, how about you? No, how, no, 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 no. I yeah, I can't. I have trouble. Um, no, you're right. I think it's a it's a romantic narrative that a lot of times artists tell themselves. So that you yeah. like you'll you'll meet people who are like, I'm a writer. It's like, oh cool, what you write? And they're like, well, I'm not a writer, but like I'm an alcoholic, like Hemingway. And you're like, yeah. that's not the same. Uh, <laughs> I've done that with comedy before. For the times yeah. I felt like I'm like the best comic mm-hmm. is when I'm just getting like trashed or like writing filth or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But the times I'm actually getting the most productive making the 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 best art is mm-hmm. usually when I'm like going to the gym and like right. eating healthy and I agree. all this like boring shit. Yep. But mm-hmm. that narrative is not as fun. You know, when, when you're in that yeah. self-destructive mode, you're like, yeah, but like I thought comics were supposed to be like Kinnison <laughs> and Belushi yeah. and die. Yeah. I've definitely felt that exact same way. The death. It's like drinking like, fuck it. This is life. This yeah. is yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Doing this for my art. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hope you guys like it. <laughs> I, I I do have a memory of smoking a cigarette and just being like, fuck it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go write a poem. <laughs> 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 fuck yeah, dude. Read some Bukowski. Yeah. Brandon, yep. Brandon's been drinking over 30 beers a night. Dude, really. it's crazy. <laughs> it's really nuts. Are you okay? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm drinking six beers a night. Okay. <laughs> is, that a lot, is that a lot for you? That's a Get lot it for up, me. Dude. Yeah. Huh? Get it more. up. Oh, you more? More beers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get some. Uh, you should get into Coke, too. That'll help you drink more. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Hard liquor, hard yeah. Liquor. Hard liquor, yeah. Meth? Meth, yep. I got your hookup. I will soon. Um, <laughs> that, that's something that we do, like, I would also do. Like, mm-hmm. I would, you would, like, do one substance to essentially cancel out the first substance. Yeah. And you're like, I could have just done no substances. <laughs> like, you're like, oh, I'm drunk, so I'm tired, so I'll do coke to stay up. It's yeah. like, mm-hmm. but that's just to bring you back to where you were, like, right. $80 before this. <laughs> yeah. Like, you would ha- be, uh, you would feel good. Like, when I used to smoke weed, I would just, I always, once a year, I'm like, I'm going to be a weed guy. Like, this is my fucking, I'm the weed guy. Like, I do jujitsu, I do comedy, like, and I'm not. <laughs> I am, like, the cliche Eat shitty food, fall asleep. I'm the bad weed joke. Is like me. <laughs> That's funny. And I will just like 
I'll like smoke and I'll have like a pot of coffee to try to stay awake. And I still will like yeah. fucking pizza. I will fall asleep. But I'm drinking the coffee because I'm like, this is making me tired. So I'm going to cancel right. this out. I was like, do nothing. Mm. Do none of those things. Yeah, yeah. And then you were fine. But it's also, I think, this, uh, I think people just have this desperate need for like identity. You know, and that's why, like, I made the, like, the political show, because, like, some some of us, it has to be a tribe, right? Like, I am fully progressive, and if you don't check off all the boxes of progressive, you're out. And then it's like, well, now what am I? Am I an independent? Am I a libertarian? Mm -hmm. Like, we need, like, labels. And the same thing happens mentally, where if you don't feel like your jokes are good enough or that you, as yourself, uh, are something worth other people's time or Mm -hmm. value, you're like, well, Jamie's not working, so what about, like cool drunk Jamie or what about like stoner Jamie? Like it is embarrassing. I turned 37 last week and uh, it was my birthday. Subscribe to my podcast. (laughs) And I turned 37 and the last time I had like a weed phase, I feel like it was like a couple months before I met my girlfriend. And it's been great. She really is like the one, like ever since I met her, like I stopped drinking, like it's just been awesome. Um, But I had another weed phase and my tweets read like, a 16 year old that smoked weed for the first time. <laughs> like the tweet of mine that like it's blew just like, up. These the... potato chips taste like baked potatoes. No, no it, <laughs> it's, it's worse than that. I have to mention that I'm smoking weed yeah. in every tweet. Like, yeah. if I'm, like, reading the news, I have to be, like, getting high and watching C SPAN. Yeah. Like, the tweet of mine that went the most viral was like, I was like, uh, Something like, I am getting high and going to see Spider-Man by myself in the theaters, like, years old. Or something like that. But it was literally me as a 36-year-old bragging to be, like, smoking (laughs) weed. And it's just that fucking desperate thirst for identity. Like, I can Mm. be the stoner guy because I'm not happy being the, like, me guy. Does Mm. that make sense? Sounds like uh, you're still... Undecided as to what you you're gonna be. I know. Mm. Yes. So you're gonna and, be. And the you're find a new you in the desert. I know. Mm. Th- 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 but even that, it's desert. Fuck L.A. Jamie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. where I can't just be like, oh, I lo- like L.A. Like I'm so glad you said that thing about L.A. Because I'm like, yeah, L.A. is fine, mm. and I do really like it. But the second I was like, I'm going to the desert. I'm like, fuck LA. I've done yeah, this yeah. a lot. Every time I've quit comedy, I haven't been like, oh, comedy is a fun thing my friends still do. <laughs> I'm just like, fuck comedians. Comics are the most like narcissistic pieces of shit. Oh, yeah. look, who mails in another movie? Like, you were mean to me once. Suck a dick. Like, yeah. And I just oh, geez, get man. so angry. <laughs> uh, and what it is, is it's not me being angry at comedy. It's me feeling like a failure yeah, and right. having to like burn everything down behind me so I don't see that I fucked up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Pardon the interruption, but this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. And I love BetterHelp. You guys know I'm a huge supporter of therapy. And a lot of you guys maybe can't afford it or you're in some random town. There's not a lot of therapists there. Well, guess what? I got BetterHelp for you. Uh, They are online therapy. You can talk to a licensed therapist anywhere in the world. You can do text, video, uh, Skype. You can text them anytime. Like if you ever want to vent about something, text your assigned therapist licensed therapist text them anytime and they'll get back to you that's something that's different than normal therapy like i can't just text my therapist anytime she'll she'd say um please make an appointment come see me but with better help text away baby you'll get timely and thoughtful responses plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change your counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Go to betterhelp.com dad and join the over 500,000 people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. For I'm Sorry Dad listeners... You guys get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash dad. Please do it if you're thinking about seeing a therapist. BetterHelp makes it easy. Betterhelp.com slash dad. Back to the pod. How many times have you quit comedy? Oh, it used to be an ongoing joke. I would promote my shows when I was like when I was doing well hmm. and touring a lot. I would promote my shows as like this is the last show I'll ever do. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a show. I had a tour one year that was just called Jamie Kilstein Hates Comedy. <laughs> I'm quitting comedy now to yeah. go just focus on the podcast and writing. Cool. And go to the desert. But like at least twenty 
at least 20 times. Did you make a scene? Like, at a Every club? time. Like, I quit. Oh, I wish I did. They'd be, <laughs> they'd be like, who are you? You're not even past here. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think I was famous enough to make a scene. I, I, I would announce it on Twitter. I would talk about it on my podcast. Uh... One time, Robin Williams talked me out of quitting. Really? Yeah. Did wow. I tell you that story? No. It's a no. fucking... It's a wild story. That's uh, cool. I don't think I've told it on any podcast. So uh, so this was after... So uh, Joe Rogan and I are friends, um, but we had this big like political fight years right. ago. I saw it. And then it was ridiculous uh, on my part. Um, and yeah, jo- Joe was... Being a bully, too. We were both not our best selves. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, like, he's, like, evolved so much on, like, those issues. And I think I have, too. And, but essentially what it was was, like, I was, again, I felt like I was failing in comedy. So I'm, like, I had to double down as, like, I'm now the super liberal political guy. Uh-huh. And fuck comics, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and then, so that's when, like, all of my comedy friends started, like, hating me. And it was just, I was depressed doing comedy when I was successful. And now I'm like, everyone hates me. F- fucking, I'm right. done. And me and my ex were going to see Book of Mormon that week in New York. And um, and I told her, I was like, hey, I know I've jokingly quit, like, a lot. But, like, the podcast is doing well enough. Like, I'm out. I can't anymore. Like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Like, I was suicidal. And I was like, I'm done. And... And she said, okay. She was like, no question. She just knew it was serious. And she was like, cool. We're mm-hmm. fine. So we, we go to see the play. And then uh, intermission happens. And I'm waiting in line. Uh, I'm waiting in line to use the bathroom. And I see the guy who plays Cam from Modern Family, Eric Stone Street. Is that uh, the redhead guy? No, the big guy, his partner. Oh, okay. And, yeah. uh, and at the time, because I've always been like a dad, I'm like, Modern Family is a quaint, lovely show. And I loved it. Mm. And I was like, I want to say something to him. But I was like, I don't want to be the fucking... Uh, the guy bothering like a celebrity on his way to right. the bathroom. Mm-hmm. But then I do the douchebag thing where I'm like, I'll be a cool artist and I'll say, I enjoy your work. And then I'll just turn back around and then he'll probably think I'm an artist and then we'll be friends. And he'll be like, wait, <laughs> come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come be in my show, Modern Family. <laughs> yeah. uh, I did that. I sat next to Samuel L. Jackson on a plane once. That's not true. I sat one seat away because I'm pretty sure he bought the seat next to him for his because snakes. it was in first class and empty. Yeah, nice. for, he bought the God snakes. damn, man. Every time Fuck. he gets on a plane, <laughs> He must be just like, fuck, here fuck, it, here here it go. fucking comes. Uh, Real quick, my favorite joke of uh, the movie Long Shot oh, yeah. was about Samuel L. They were talking about Which like, was it? they were just describing like, they look perfect like this, like that. And someone mm. said, perfect, like a Kangol hat on Samuel L. Jackson. So good. <laughs> I so butchered good. it, but I laughed yeah. hard. Most other people in the theater didn't laugh. Mm. I assume I just have a higher... IQ. IQ yeah. Oh, I laugh yeah, harder at those lines just to be like, you're all wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but anyways. Uh, oh, so, oh yeah. Back to my dead friend. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> so I see... Uh, name so he, drop. Name drop. He's dead. <laughs> um, so I see... So I go to do it. I'm like, I'm going to go say I enjoy your work. So I turn around to Cam and I go, I enjoy your work. And literally, I don't even get the sentence out. He is turning around. I assume, like, because I've creeped him out. He turns around to the guy behind him and goes, I just want you to know I really enjoy your work. And he <laughs> pulled my fucking move, and the guy behind him it was Robin. And Robin sees me, and Robin and I were friends for a while. He saw me in San Francisco and nice. just, like, made my career. He was, like, the only reason I didn't quit. Really? Like, in that period, um, where he got me, like, his agent and manager. Oh, everything. Sweet. Everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I still have his manager, and, like, he would talk to me about my depression. Like, I would, he would call so you, me oh, about right. my... So you actually knew it. You were friends yeah. with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. And so, uh, yeah, it wasn't just some random, like, he passed me in the street, and he's like, don't quit comedy. I'm like, thanks, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Williams. I thought you were going to say he tweeted you or something. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. And, uh, and then he just flies away. <laughs> um, so he... So Robin sees me, and he kind of nicely pushes Cam out of the way. And he goes, Jamie. And I go, oh. And we hug, and he goes, wait here. And I go, okay. So he comes out of the bathroom, and he goes... Uh, I go, hey, you have to meet... Uh, a- Allie, my ex, because uh, he funded our podcast for like two years oh. when we were getting off the ground and Allie never met him. So he was like, oh, he goes, I have to meet her. And I go, where are you sitting? He goes, I'm right here. And then he goes, where are you sitting? I go, oh, I'm on like the other side of the theater. Like, don't worry. It's going to be a clusterfuck if you come. And he goes, no, I have to meet her. And I go, okay. 
So I walk him across, and at the time he has this huge beard because uh, he's like this like god beard because he's doing uh, a Broadway show where he's playing a prisoner of war, and so he looks like very wise and prophetic. And he comes over to our seat, and Allie, like to her credit, we do not talk anymore, but she like pushes every like we were like by all these like rich people who were like giving us shitty looks for like our tattoos and stuff and she uh-huh. like shoves them out of the way and they're freaking out around Robin and like here's yeah. the thing we've seen young people freak out when they yeah. see like celebrities I've never seen someone who looked like my dad yeah. just like he, without saying anything <laughs> just like touching him like it yeah. was the most surreal shit ever so Allie pushes uh, them aside runs and gives Robin a hug Robin who I said nothing to on the way to the bathroom, about comedy, about anything, uh, grabs her by the face and just goes, you can't let him quit. Oh, wow. Like, he sensed it. Really? Like, he had this weird, sad comedian. Uh. Maybe he was just saying it in general, but, like, that was the day. That Mm -hmm. was the hour, two hours before, that I was like, I'm officially done. And then he just, like, told her, he was like, why I shouldn't quit. Mm. Uh, And, like, that was it. That artificially kept me going for, like, a year. And then he died. And then I was like, fuck this. Mm. Like, I quit, which is like the okay. exact opposite of uh, what he wanted or what you're supposed to do. Um, but I have never felt like I love comedy and I love joking, especially about sad things. But like, I don't know, man. And I'm sure you're going like something about it. There's something about it that either didn't resonate or again, maybe this is me, my dad. Like I just had a horrible conversation with my dad on the way here, but like my dad thinks I run away from success. And to me, I would never think that cause I'm like, no, I don't want to be struggling. Like I want to be very successful and whatever. Mm-hmm. But my dad's like, every time you reach this peak, you stop. And so, I don't know where that comes from. Like I haven't really read up on that. Like if it comes from just like you, des- you think you don't deserve it subconsciously or, maybe. um, do you, uh, ever see a therapist? No, that was actually another part of our conversation uh, where he, he like, I guess, asked one of our friends uh, who's a therapist for, like, uh, recommendations mm. and all this stuff. And he's like, I wrote it to you in a letter, but I decided to, like, call you and tell you about it. And, like, I know he's trying, uh, but it's – and all my friends see therapists. And I know I should definitely see a therapist, mm. but it's <laughs> – it's, uh, there's also this dumb, like – part of me where I'm like I would rather not ad- I don't know like I feel like when like when I, I'm trying to figure out why I got so upset with him and I think it was when someone just says you need therapy yeah. you're not hearing like hey there's someone who can really help talk through it you're hearing just like you're broken yeah, yeah. you know what I mean even yeah. though like everyone in LA sees a therapist mm-hmm. and it, we're all kind of broken and mm-hmm. like that's okay right um but I think I think I'm being stubborn where I'm like, I've made it through the shit I've made it through yeah. this yeah. far. And like, you know, I'm not, I'm overly self-aware and self-analytical and I'm always reading books about like, you know, psychology and personal development and all this stuff. Um, and I, I talk very openly about right. my problems. I feel, as like you you would, I, feel like, I feel like you'd enjoy therapy. You think so? It's just so interesting. See, yeah. I feel like I talk too much already in my regular life that I would feel self-indulgent. I don't know. You know what I want? I want a therapist who's going to act like a fucking coach. Like, I want a therapist to be like, here's what we do. Mm. I I don't want to find a therapist where I'm just... talk Because I would rather talk to you guys. I would rather talk to my very funny friends. Like, I'm literally friends with the funniest people. Like, I would rather talk to you guys about this shit than just, like, a stranger. Mm. Um, Well, Brandon's not funny, but... Yeah, I don't know why you brought me in. Oh, great. Sorry about that. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. I was talking to both of you guys. No, Jared Brennan's mic. Oh, you're okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's killing it, and the the audience at home, wink. <laughs> um, but yeah, I so I don't know if I want to solve it myself, or but if I if there was like a coach where I'm like, right. here's my problems. Yeah, it's yeah. like great. Here's how you get over jealousy, or here's how you get over your self hatred, or here's like five things I want you to like journal. Yeah, yeah. My, I, th- my therapist does sh- stuff like that. Do, do they? Like when I was depressed, she, she was like, here's what to do. That's what she I gave need. Me, she was, yeah, that's why I like her. She's tough. Okay, because I went to one in Brooklyn like three times when I was suicidal before I moved out here, and she just kind of like wanted to like hear my stuff. And then yeah. I was like, but what do I do? And she's like, it's really just about like... Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. 
That was uh, Robin Williams. Oh, great. From oh, Beyond? Yeah. Oh, Does shit. he say I should... We should probably take it. He says, yeah, yeah. He says I take it back. <laughs> Quit. Oh, good, good, good. I'll take it. I have been waiting for that <laughs> call from Beyond the Grave. Yeah, what a relief. For so long. Kind of but, a huge deal to hang up on somebody calling from Beyond the Grave. No, you know? no, 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 no. It's fine. He'll get it. All right. What <laughs> And what if he was like, you must stop Aladdin from being shown in theaters this week. <laughs> and then, yeah, you open fire in a movie theater. Oh, oh boy. Such Jeez. a good idea. Yeah, great one. Legal in Arizona for legal. anyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sweet. That's why I'm moving. That's yeah. legal. Uh, I'm afraid to go to Rotten Tomatoes about Aladdin. Is why? It, is it out yet? No, it's I not think out it comes yet. out next weekend. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I why think it's going to be very bad, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, good. it's going to be bad. Lion King, however. Did you see the trailer for that? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be very good. I <laughs> think, think so. Looks good. I think so. Brandon thinks it looks oh, bad. You don't, oh, you I don't. I think they. I just don't get the whole. <laughs> like, why you're the, doing why it? Are you I know. Doing it I know, again. I know. Like, I, know. I just. It's already there. <laughs> I know. Like, I know. It's, it's on. And it's perfect. Cellular. It's perfect. I know. It's yeah. a beautiful I wonder, thing. Will it get to a new audience? Like, do kids know Lion King? Yeah, or do they. Yeah. They must still, yeah. right? My brother shows his kids those old uh, 90s Disney movies all the time. And so they know. They. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. They're just doing it because people like it's nostalgia. nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. Here you go. Oh childhood. yeah, I get that. I'm being tricked. Yeah, like, I understand. <laughs> okay. Where I'm like, oh, it's my childhood with Beyonce. Great, of course. Of course, <laughs> I'm in. Like, a hundred percent. They should uh, add nudity to all these kids. Just like fill yeah. it up, <laughs> make them R-rated. <laughs> Aladdin, but with the sex, the sex scene we all wanted. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> we all wanted. That we all wanted. <laughs> that we all prayed for nightly as children. <laughs> I thought, uh, what's her name in, Al- in Aladdin? Which one? Jasmine? In the cartoon? Oh, yeah, Jasmine. thought she was super hot. Uh, yeah, yeah, my favorite's Ariel. She's hot. Then Jasmine. Mm. She's also hot. Beauty and the Beast was never <laughs> my... Uh, I Same. Could, I never got into it. Same here. But yeah, Lion King was my favorite. No hot chicks. Um, <laughs> yeah, right? Jessica uh, Rabbit. Jessica Rabbit. That was yeah. insane. Yeah. That was, the fact that that was a kid's movie, yeah. like uh, my girlfriend and I went to Disney World. What's and we, Jessica and we, Rabbit? Roger Rabbit. Who, oh. Who oh, framed yeah, Roger yeah. Rabbit. And we yeah. went on the Roger Rabbit ride, and my girlfriend had never seen Roger Rabbit, and yeah. she's like, can you explain this movie to me? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no <you> <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't. It was yeah. an animated rabbit. Like a gratuitously drawn like hot chick with like yeah. boobs yeah. spilling out. She was like a sexy nightclub. Uh, yeah. And then the way the main bad guy died at the end mm. gave me nightmares <laughs> for years. They spilled acid on him and he just slowly melted. Yeah. It was a children's movie. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I w- watching that as a kid and uh, uh, a boob joke made me uncomfortable because I was like watching with my parents. The, oh, like, yeah. Jessica Rabbit mm. had a booby trap in her boobs. That was the and joke. It was all about her boobs, and it was yeah. just like, eh, my mom's here. I wonder what the writer of Roger <laughs> Rabbit has written since then. That's Robert Zemeckis. Is it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, Robert Zemeckis made that. He Great. directed I'm pretty sure he wrote it, too. Love it. Great. Of yeah. course he did. Of yeah. course he and did. What else has he done? I uh, know Polar Express. Uh, <laughs> right. Oh, Forrest Gump, that movie. Yeah. So uh, he hasn't done shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> did a Christmas Carol with Jim Carrey, where he played Ebenezer Scrooge. Jim Carrey? Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. That was like half animated or something? Yeah, it's like that, that weird animation style. That was That's that Roger Rabbit so... thing. Yeah. The half that... animated, yeah. Oh. Well, this was like CGI. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> the the Polar Express movie is like, it's yeah, full weird. mocap, but, and it looks like a person, but just enough to where you're fucking freaked out. I yeah. remember that. Just enough to where it's creepy. You're just like, I'm a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, I remember it's that. It's like, why not just cast actors? Like... <laughs> no, no, just make it a little weird. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like video game faces. Yeah. Almost. No, thanks. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, this is has nothing to do with anything, but I just bought uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey mm. video game. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it also make you want <laughs> to buy guns? <laughs> I've never played video games. Oh, really? Well, At like, all? I was like Nintendo, Sega, like when I was a kid. All right, yeah. hell yeah. But when like it became cool for adults to play video games, yeah, I was like, I th- this will take over my life. Yeah, it, it can. Was, like, right when like those like big Batman games came out, I feel like yeah. maybe like seven Arkham, years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when like all my like cool friends were suddenly playing video <laughs> games again, and I'm like, hell this yeah. this yeah. will destroy me. Yep. Uh, what other uh, vices do you have? You're you're alcohol free. So I quit drinking. It's been like two months. Comedy free. Comedy free. Yeah, yeah that's done. Um, very serious all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Never all, joking. All these jokes have been like uh, what my my sponsor would call relapses. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I I th- there's definitely like that like love addiction. That okay. like love validation thing. I don't want to say anything that's going to scare my new girlfriend away. Um, but like I think that's like for sure. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Maybe some codependency thing. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where like I don't want, I don't need to, like I don't want to cheat on my girlfriend, and like I'm not going to. Um, but like with her, even in the relationship, like if she, like she's sick today, and it's been a lot of me being like, "Are we okay?" And she's like, <laughs> "I'm sick," and yeah. I was just like, "Cool, cool, 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 cool." But like, are you good, me? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just like so gross and like unbecoming and and. Like, I'll do the right thing. Like, I'm like, hey, I'm going to pick you up stuff on the way home. And, like, mm. let me, like, make you dinner. And, mm. like, so, like, I'm not, like, a shithead. Where I'm not, like, she's sick. And I'm like, list the ways you love me. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's still, like, very, like. <laughs> she, she coughs. Oh, I get it. You don't love me anymore. <laughs> that it. was an I don't love you cough. <laughs> but it's yeah. still very just, like, like gotcha. n- needy. Right. Um, and even. I mean, even like us moving, like there's definitely part of me where I'm like, I'm like, this is great. It's just us. It's just going to be us, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and you know, she was the same way. Like she would go, she was in like a shitty day job she didn't like. And, you know, we were both just miserable when she was there. And so (laughs) it was my idea to be like, fucking quit, you know? And there was part of it where I'm like, a lot of people, especially people who listen to your show, I'm sure, um, have nine to five jobs and they just accepted it. Like Emma, my girlfriend is so fucking weird and funny and cool. And she was just in this boring nine to five job where like their biggest like perk was like drinking wine on a Friday in the office. Mm -hmm. And like everyone was just like gossipy and Mm -hmm. like the way she talked, she was like a different person. I was like, could you not be like weird and like be like who you are? And she's a really great creative, like no one makes me laugh harder than her. And now that she's quit the job, she's suddenly just this like cool, weird, creative person. She's right, like, I think cool. maybe I want to write. And it's like, yeah, definitely mm-hmm. write. Um, and she's helping with the podcast. She's help, like using all of her marketing skills from her shitty job nice. um, to the podcast. And I think there are a ton of people out there who just, she's like, I just kind of accepted this was what I had to do. Right. You know? Well, I and, think most people yeah. do that. And with their lives. I'm not saying, you know, leave your job and start painting, but like, Definitely find that time to paint or yeah. play music or do whatever you want. And then, like, you can quit and you can do that stuff. And so I really did want her to quit for her, just like I would tell, you know, listeners who write that in. But there was also part of me that was like, great, now we're, we can't break up because we're going to be together all the time. <laughs> you know, as opposed to, like, there are, very, yeah, there are very healthy <laughs> people who are like, you know, you need to spend time apart. And, like, that's, you know, the whole, like... Leaving makes the heart font whatever. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I didn't memorize it because it doesn't apply to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> fuck that. Uh, so yeah, so I think codependency is like probably a big thing. But then I was talking to my friend the other day, and he was like, "Some of the most successful couples I know quit their job, started a business together, have fucking kids, are super codependent, only hang out with themselves, and they're mm-hmm. great." So it's like I don't know if you are where I think it's super unhealthy is if, like, your partner... Like, if I had a girl who was, like, really independent and that made me, like, jealous or... And I was just like, I don't want you going out with other people right. because... And it's... You know what I mean? Like, that's far different than, like, let's make a show together. Like, moving was her idea. Um, that's and, way different. And the desert was... Yeah, totally. So, like, I just don't want people to think, like, that's a good thing. But I think if you find a person who's, like... Hey, I'm kind of sick of the shitheads I'm hanging out with, and like I want to quit drinking and get healthy. And I'm like, hey, I'm kind of sick of that shit too. Yeah. Um, you want to go make art together in the desert? I think that's romantic as hell. <laughs> uh, but I still have to watch myself uh, when it does come to like, yeah, like attachment and like codependency. Gotcha. I think those are the only. Yeah, I mean, I got like mom and dad issues, but soon I think vice be, wise, that's soon, it. To soon, to, soon to be meth mm-hmm. and uh, murder with guns. Yeah, gun right. Murder. Gun murder. <laughs> um, gun murder gun. and meth. <laughs> what is it? Sweet. Nice. Uh, well, we're 45 minutes in. Oh. That just about does it. Yeah. All right. Any closing statements? You should call your let's, new uh, let's podcast "Gun Murder and Death." Gun, gun murder, murder and death. death. Oh, that'd be mm-hmm. so good. So, like, what's your fir- what's your plan when you first move? Granted, you move in. So like, we're leaving what, what, LA June 25th. We're pretty much like we've put ourselves on lockdown to the the podcast in the last 2 3 weeks is like almost like doubled income and and we're trying to keep it commercial free too so I can make fun of everybody politically mm-hmm. and uh 
And the numbers have gone up by like the thousands or whatever. Sweet. So I'm trying to go on like my favorite podcast before I leave LA, this one. <laughs> and uh, right, and we're right. just trying to get the word out about that and just be able to I feel like if the podcast is sustaining us, which we're like very close to just being able to make a living off that, then like we don't have to do shit we don't want to do. Right. Um, and I don't have to do stand up or she doesn't have to like work a shitty like job she hates. Um, and the podcast is really seeming to bring people like joy, which is awesome. Mm. So everything is being focused on that. Um, and then I have to go meet her parents. I'm doing that next Ooh. weekend. Um, very exciting. They seem so much more supportive than my parents. Yeah. Um, they've been like, like, like tell Jamie, we're really like proud of his accomplishments. My dad's like, go to therapy, you broken asshole. Uh, <laughs> he was trying, he was trying, he was trying to be supportive. I just got, I was very emotional on my way here. Um, and mm. so, yeah, we're really just doing that. And, and I'm writing more, which is fucking great. Um, I just got to meet with, like, the dude who wrote Deadpool. And he's like, yeah, I also, like, got a house, like, out in the desert. And, like, creative. <laughs> and you're like, you don't need to live in L.A. to be a writer. And I was like, what? Mm. Um, so now that poor asshole is going to get all my scripts. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I'm just trying to, like, make the art I like instead of the art that I think people want from me. Mm. Um, and even with the podcast, man, like, it's hard. I would make a bazillion dollars if I went full conservative and mm. was like, fuck my old woke friend. Do it. Or, yeah, or yeah. if I went like super like lefty. That's how I made all my money before. It was just mm. me on Twitter trashing strangers and I hated it and I was miserable and I was depressed. Pick a side. Yeah, and yeah. so like my agent, no one's excited about a podcast that's like, hey, under Trump, how about we do a podcast about nuance? Like no one <laughs> fucking wants that. <laughs> but... Uh, even though the audience is growing slower because I'm not screaming at people, um, the audience is fucking cool. And I think people like hearing about the sort of extremes on both sides and mm-hmm. how they go fuck themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of everything. It's just focusing on the podcast and uh, getting healthy, not being a mess. I got to get out of my fucking... Oh, and then the mental thing is trying to accept that like I deserve love and a family. <laughs> and not kill myself before I leave LA. Yeah, don't, <laughs> so well, that's it. don't do it. Yeah, yeah, I won't. Everyone uh, listening, DM Jamie a dick pic. Yeah, so I'll save them saying don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the dick, <laughs> right on your dick. Don't do it. Yeah. I'm gonna be so happy where I'm gonna be like, yes, I did get all these new Instagram followers <laughs> from doing this podcast. And I'm like, oh, it's all dick pics. <laughs> Damn, it's all day. Just hit that follow if you are gonna send me a dick pic. Hit a follow. Right. Subscribe to the podcast. Go to the Patreon. What's your uh, Instagram? Uh, the Jamie Kilstein. So the J A M I E K I L S T E I N. Dick pics. Dick, dick pics. Yeah. In but your... also follow. <laughs> but also <laughs> dick pics. But follow. In your podcast is the Jamie Kilstein podcast. Right? Jamie Kilstein podcast. It's yeah. for free on uh, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes. Everything, including all my social media, mm-hmm. is at uh, my new website, which is just jamiekilsteinpodcast dot com. Might be the easiest way to find me on everything. And yeah, I would love you guys to check out the show and uh, and say hi and. Uh, Hmm. Send me dicks. Yeah, I, I will report you as spam if you don't follow me and you send me a dick. He'll so, send you a dick pic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, send him a dick pic. Yeah. No, I'm finally not in trouble anymore. I will send no dick pics. Uh, <laughs> but everybody, yeah. So that is, uh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, but no, this sounds like I'm being sarcastic and I'm like winking. No tits because I have a girlfriend and I'm very in love. It, <laughs> again, it, it sounds like I'm like, no tits. Wink, wink, wink. Um, but tits. I will get in trouble. Um, and I, I, there are no tits I would rather see than my codependent girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> but as a fun prank, send them some tits. Yeah. <laughs> tits, heavy tits. <laughs> well, Jamie, thanks for being on the pod. I love you guys. Thank you. Uh, we end every uh, episode with our patrons who are paying $25 or more. And we have a new one. Oh, we do. Joseph, Joseph Cerrone. Joseph Cerrone. I love you, Joseph. I love you, Joseph. Thanks for donating $25 a month. Steve Marshall. Steve Marshall. That's the one that we know. OG. OG. He's been there since the beginning. Steve, thanks. What's up, dude? What's up, Steve? I saw your tweet. Sorry, you're you're not alone now. And actually, yeah. Nicholas Caprio still donating. Yeah. One hundred dollars a month. Good Whoa. God. He's only doing it because he's our friend. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to help us. <laughs> he's just a nice guy. He's just a good guy. It's amazing. Yeah. It's not like I love you. Donating to your Patreon. Yeah. Yeah, patreon.com slash I'm sorry, dad, to give us your fucking money. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry, dad.